I know that we're supposed to go to all the way up here, which we're going to do. The interesting part that I th that I think was those two missions, the one where I actually denied the Heliarch, and then the one where I brought the Lunarians back from human space, were probably not sequential. I bet you they could have happened at any time. Like, I could have waited on the Heliarch decision, and then brought them back from human space. I don't think it was one after the other. I think it could have happened at any time, really. But you know what? We're about to join the Lunarians, I think. And we're about to start fighting some Heliarchs. So let's see what happens. And by the way, as a reminder, I still have the pre-joining Heliarchs saved. So, theoretically, after all this is done, I can go see what the other side was too. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Who knows? I'm not sure if they reconcile in the end. I'm not sure if that. I'm not even sure that the uh, content was even made enough to even have the reconciliation. If not, usually, usually the game reconciles enough. I think that's what the that's what the free worlds did at least. But that was pretty linear. I actually think there was a branch where you could have had, you could have got access to the cloaking device, which I basically don't even use. Do I still have it on my ship? I do. Or nukes, if you were like with the syndicate. Oh my god, here we go. I can support, I don't have to support them at all either. I can just be like, nah, I'm out of here. No, we're doing this. Here on Remote Blue, the Lunarian leaders are waiting for you. Would you like to meet with them and officially join the Lunarium? Given their cause against the Heliarchs, this would no doubt set you on a path to conflict with the Heliarchy. We're in. We are so in. Yes. Boom. You leave your ship to find a pair of Kemic waiting for you. Follow us to the meeting point you will, one of them says, and you oblige, trying to keep a low profile as you go with them across the city. You reach a district near the center of town with modest blocks and a few skyscrapers and head into what seems to be a Kimmick restaurant. You continue following the two Kimmick past busy tables and Kimmick patrons who all have highs on you as you head back, as you head to the back. Taking an elevator, you move down a few levels. You arrive at some doors that open to an Iraq delegation with half a dozen bulky Iraqis surrounding a young, finely dressed lady in a blue, quote unquote, dress with white lines wrapped around, wrapping around it. Oh, finally arrived, have they? She says as you step off the elevator, coming to meet you. Aaron Schatz, is it? Yes, it is. So intrigued by your our most recent recruit, I was, they decided to come to this meeting for once. Lady Lubmad Beblis, I am, head of our great house and benefactor to the Lunarium. That's interesting. So how's Beblis? Is that? She steps one leg forward to you as if some archaic Iraq gesture. Unsure on how to respond, you do your best to... You, you do your best extravagant bow, which seems to satisfy her as she pulls her leg back closer to her body. Confess I must, however, the most inconvenient it is to have come so far away while maintaining a low profile. Difficult to just disappear it is when the head of the greatest Iraq house you are. Hope I do that worth it your contributes are. Your contributions are. Your con oh, God. Let's read this again. Hope I do that worth it your contributions are. I'll do what I can to help, or it sounds like you have contributed much to the Lunarium cause. I am one cure. I'm curious about this one. How have you helped the resistance? Oh, it's a book time. Let's let's strap in and read it. Yes, well observed. Kept the Lunarian redoubt safe from prying Heliarch eyes and ears, my house has. Under me, assured that found by them, no dealings of ours, no dealings involving you are, she says in a smug tone. The chemic who accompanied you here asks that you continue on. Lobe Mad and her body cards lead the way through busy cubicles and hallways where dozens of Kimmick work at their computers and screens as if monitoring the whole city. At the end of what seems to be the main passage of the complex, you pass through a doorway to find the Lunarian leader seated around a table. You're shown to a seat, and as Lob Lobemad comes in at the end, one of the bodyguards announces, Lady Lobemad Beblis, head of our great house. Some of the others at the table look to one another, and one of the Kimmick who accompanies you all the way from your ship sighs quietly before coming to Lobemad. Most welcome you are, Lady Lobemad. He says as he begins pointing to the leaders one by one, starting from your left with a Kimmick. Your host, Cherie, is the head of our local forces and organizer of many of our operations. 
fought the Heliarch since a young age, she has. He continues pointing to them in a clockwise pattern. Now to the left of Chiri. Likewise, helping us for decades now, Tomog has, in spreading word of our group and bringing to the people the truth about the Heliarchy. Another prominent Iraq, and vital to the task soon to be discussed, Obat is. A studious linguist, an aspiring diplomat she is. Already worked together, I believe you and Payakri have. One of our most senior militia officers she is. He takes a pause, looking at Lobmap, almost as if waiting for some approval regarding his introduction to the other. She simply nods, and he moves on. And... Ilaram, a prominent Sarid Heliarch Arbiter who defected over a century, a century ago? Advising us since he has. He waits for her to say something before looking back at the table and pointing at you. Oh, of course, Aaron Schatz, the human who's helped us greatly and who's joining us today is... Look at that, I joined today. Satisfied with the injunctions, Lobmat takes her seat, much of the Kimmick's relief. Very grateful we are. That made the time for this meeting you have, Lady Lobman, Cherie says. A special task for Captain Schatz we have, and wish to have all the leaders present discuss we did. But first, welcome our newest member we must, she says, looking at you. Any questions for us, have you, Captain? Uh, let's see here. Ooh, we got a lot of questions. What are you going to do if you manage to take the Heliarchs? You'll need to fight against the Heliarchs at some point. Are you capable of doing that? Am I the only outsider helping you? How do you pay for all this? I don't care about that one. I'm fine for now. What is, I don't know. I want to ask a question. Uh, let's see here. This one I don't care that much about. What are you going to do if you manage to take down Heliarchs? Let's do that one. Rebuild. First, we will need to, Cherry responds. Fight tooth and nail to remain in power, they will. So expect a great deal of damage done to the coalition we do. Once back in order, everything is. Focus on reassuring the populace we should. A change for the better it will be. And help in making sure everyone realizes that House Beblis will, Low Mab jumps in, earn back what they took from us we will. Wow. Once the, hat, once the head of House Beblis is done, Cherie continues, pointless our fight will have been if corrupting those rings again our successors thousands of years from now become. Set up transparency measures and means to ensure that absolute power the consoles do not have we will. Interesting. See that? You will need to fight them. Are you capable? Try and fool you, I will not. At a tremendous disadvantage, to say the least, we are. Pyakri answers. Weaker our ships are, and far less powerful weapons we boast. Mostly human designs. Of course they are. Due to being simpler, easier to produce them in what factories we have they are. Also lack experience the troops do. The mood around the table quickly dims as she goes on listing the ways the Lunarium is lagging in comparison to your opponents. Elirum stands up, pointing both hands to the table to draw attention. Smarter than us, they are not. I assure you of that, I can. Wanting in many areas we are, yes, but only because hoard our best materials they do. Already preparing some deadlier weapons we are. Finished, the blueprints have been. Only lacking the right materials we are. When secured those we have, move on to reforming our arsenal we can. And maybe get some better ships produced too. Now we're now we're talking. See, this is this is the this is it. And suppose I do intend to tell me where to attack for such materials. You do? Pyakri asks as she stands herself up, caught by the unforeseen will my men be again, by an Iraq battalion you forgot to mention, again. Caught apparently off guard by the question, Elirum looks at her for a few seconds, then resigns himself to sit back down. Alright, we, we did that one. We did that one. Am I the only outsider? For a few seconds, they simply exchange looks at your question until Love Mad speaks up. Transmissions and messages from some source Beblis has received for centuries now. Told us they have... Told us they have of Heliarch activity, fleet movements, training drills, propaganda plans. Always exactly right on the predictions the messages were. Also pointed us to equipment caches. Caches with outfits previously found nowhere in coalition they have. Human weaponry, blueprints, factory parts. Well, you know what? This might be the Quarg doing something, or who knows. Aware of the identity of whoever does it, we are not, Iliaram says. An arbiter I was, and though a great deal I knew, still kept for me some critical information was. Possible it is that from one of the consoles the information comes, could be. Though, difficult to seal a jump drive to bring in the weapons it would be, even for a console. He pauses, a dead stare in his eyes as he bites lightly on a finger. Word of experiments we have also received from the message. Some manner of procedure to take over bodies? Stop whatever it is they're doing in the rings we must. Gross. How you pay for all this? The rest of the table looked to Loeb Mad at the same time, prompting her explanation. Amass great fortune over our history, House Beblis has. As part of our gracious help to Lunarium, providing nearly everything in financial terms we have been. 
She stops with the other still looking at her, as if expecting something more. She remains silent, so Cherie looks back at you, continuing. Also taking some loans from the House Plum Tab in our steed, House Bebelis and Interest have. Not terribly passionate for our cause, Plum Tab's bankers are, but share our interest in booting the Heliarchs they do, even if met or talk with us they never do. Excellent, we've done this. What do you need me for? Somebody goes around the table, handling handy copies of some document of sorts to other leaders before answering. One of the center points of Heliarch propaganda, the fear of the Quarg is, serve to justify their budget and their obsession with hoarding the military for millennia has. Thought up a way to mitigate the effort, the effect on the populace Obat has. This is interesting. As if given her cue, Obat goes further into the plan. Seen in the coalition, over 6,000 years no Quark ship has. No Quark ship has been. Most likely moved on from the war they have, unlike the Heliarchs. If proof of the Quark's lack of interest in the waging war against us we had, spread it to the people we could. Given the captain's resourcefulness and jump drive, thought we did that the best way to acquire that proof, meeting up with the Quark is. She grabs one of the documents pointing to it. For you all to review these questions, I would like. Careful we should be about worded how they are. I'm starting to talk like them. Once done, we are board captain ships, I will. Meet with the Quark in human space, we must. She says, the last part looking at you, met with Quark before, have you, Captain? Yep. They have always treated me well. I'm not going to say they're obnoxious. They are obnoxious, but I'm not going to say that because I'm so nice. Yes, they can be a bit odd, but they've always treated me well. Good to hear that is. Hope I do that willing to extend that treatment. Hope I do that willing to extend that treatment to me. They are. The Lunarium leader spent an hour or so going over the question proposed for the interview, deciding to ditch some and add a few new ones. All the while, Elaram asks if... Ask in a worried manner if Obat is sure of this is sure of this idea. Forgive me if I'm sounding like a heliarch I am, but dangerous to leave it is. How the Quark would react to seeing someone from the coalition or territory we do not. I don't think they'll have a problem with it. <laughs> Understand that I do, but fine it will I will be. Unlike the Quark, it is to attack unprovoked, she answers. And if worse comes to worse, trust I do in Captain Chat's ability to ensure we escape. The leaders go over the interview questions a while longer until they've reached a consensus as it's to completeness. They wish you and Obat good luck, and you two are escorted back out of the complex to your ship. There, Obat asks for your best place for such an interview in human space, and you point to the garage in the NF system, of course, where the Quark are constructing their ring world. Then head there, we must. In your care I will be, Captain. You show it your bunk and plot a course to the garage. We're in the thick of it now. This is so awesome. And as a reminder, we still have that save, so we can join the Heliarchs and see what happens there, too. So now, uh, maybe the Quark will do something for us, but I doubt it. I highly doubt it. Let's, uh, let's... I highly doubt that they would... I highly doubt that they would help. They might help, actually. Now, see, if I was... If I was attached to the Heliarchs, though, I could probably get the Quark to be angry at me, and I could probably hurt them and capture their ships. But, we'll see. We'll see if it ends well. Oh my god. Really? And you, you heard that they have new weapons designs, too. See, that's what I want. I want new weapons designs. I want to get some weapons. I want to get some awesome ships. Alright, let's go land on this. Once you've docked in Lagrange, you go check on Ubat, who's reading some form of camera while rehearsing the questions for the interview. Just a moment, Captain. Ready in a minute, I will be. You head out of your ship and flag down the first quark you see. How may I assist you, human? It says. Let's see here. I brought an Iraq from the Coalition. She wants to interview the quark. I'm with a group from the Coalition, the Lunarium, who are fighting the Heliarchs. They want to talk to you, and have sent a diplomat to me. Let's go with the more honest one. 
It stays silent, glancing over at your ship. I see, it says. Wait here. I will bring one who can speak on the matter. It moves away in a quick step, briefly talking to some other Korg along the way who come to your ship and wait. Ubat comes out of your ship as you wait, leading to some something of a scene as some of the humans visiting the station panic at the sight of a giant spider. <laughs> Others come closer, intrigued by the unknown alien, or perhaps thinking her to be some form of a prop. Ubat doesn't pay much doesn't pay them much mind though. Instead, focus on the Korg near the two of you and watching the others in the distance. The Korg around you dissuade the gawking humans from getting closer. And after a few more minutes, a Quarg in faded light gray robes comes to meet you. Hello, human, and... Ubat, my name is, she said, a member of the Lunarian Redoubt, a group in the coalition that fights the Heliarchs I am. Assisted us much, Captain Schatz has, and brought me here now they did, for wish to ask you some questions about your views on the coalition my group does. The Quarg gazes at you two for a few seconds before squatting down to your level. Very well, what questions do you have? She hands you the camera, turning it on, and asks that you keep it as still as you can once you're positioned to get a good angle. She then connects her translator to it remotely so that the audio picks up the Quarg's translated responses. Well, begin then we shall. On the Coalition, intending to fight us again, are you? It thinks for a moment, then answers, No, we never intended to fight. It was the Sarids, Kimmick, and Iraqi of old who fought us. We are not, war we are not a warring people. Seemingly satisfied with the answer, Ubat moves on to the next. She questions the Quark for about 10 minutes on their activities outside the Coalition and their relations with the humans and other species. She even has you move the camera around for a bit to show the local human Quark interactions as the Quark compares dealing with the humanity to dealing with the Coalition species. Ubat moves from question to question as if in a checklist until she arrives at the last one. About finished we are. Thank you for your answers I am. Just one last thing. To appease the people back home. Interested in returning to take back the rings, are you? It thinks for a moment. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, of course, it says without hesitation. The rings are our homes. My home. Clearly not expecting that answer. Ubat looks at you in confusion. It's been thousands of years. You still linger in those rings? If you want them back, why haven't you returned by now? I think the second one's better. Because that would have forced a fight. Here we go. This is the... Because that would have forced a fight. The three, these heliarchs, would not listen. They never listened, it answers, crossing one arm and grabbing its shoulder, lowering its head as it backs curves. Patches of its skin start turning pitch black, and it brings its other arm to its head as in pain. By now, the atmosphere has changed, with no humans in sight around you. Dozens more quark begin to form circles around your ship, eyes fixated on Ubat. The ones closest to you watch the ones who is being interviewed carefully, like waiting for some sign, as, the, as its whole body shifts colors. Ubat still looking at you, confusion, and, wor and, when, and worry written on her face. I think that does it for the interview. Or, these are basically the same thing. She nods and gives a quick thank you to the Quark again, turning to go back into your ship. The Quark stops her, though, reaching out one arm quickly to grab one of her legs. Slowly, its skin turns back to the grayish blue from before as it calms down. Should you succeed, please permit my return home. The quark around you disperse, and the one who was interviewed stands up and moves back to the other sections of the station. You board your ship with Ubat and hand her back her camera. Mostly well it went, she says, looking through the sped up footage and pausing at certain moments where the quark is responding. Not what we expected from that last question it was, however. Disappointed, I imagine Eliaram, Eliaram will be. She tells you she'll be working on some basic edits to the footage and says you may return to Remote Blue. Now I wonder if they're going to use this for propaganda. See, now that's the thing. They could also use this for propaganda, just cut that part out. But what was interesting there is like the Quark basically said, well, we want it back, but we're not going to do it by forcing a fight because we don't want to fight you. So that was good. So they could just leave it in there and still just fine. All right, I think we've, we're down the Lunarium path now. We are... Really embedded deep with the Lunarium, we met with the Quarg. Again, we still have that save pre-question about joining the Heliarchs, too, so we could see what that is, too, once we're done with this mission chain. So we'll see if this whole thing kind of, like, figures itself out at the end. And, you know, maybe in a few... I don't even know how many missions this is going to be, but we'll see if we actually go back and try the Heliarch ones. We'll, we'll see what happens. Anyway, you know what you should do, though. You should hit the subscribe button, leave me some feedback, love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.